I don't know how long different cultures were eating the same sandwich over and over and over and over and over. But then the Vietnamese and the French come together and put an end to that with one of the greatest sandwiches of all time. Something missing. Mm. <sighs> now it feels like the holidays. And it could feel like the holidays for you too if you click the link in the description. It's 40% off on Amazon and has six times the New York Times bestseller thanks to you. Happy holidays. Well, we're finally here. We're making banh mi. People have asked for it over and over and over, which by the way, thank you for all of your requests. I do read them. I still do. You can send them to me on Instagram through DM. And if you don't follow me, what are you doing? Link is in the description. And of course we have a Discord server. The link is also in the description for that. Drop us your recommendations because we love to do them. Now to the banh mi. Hands down, one of my most favorite sandwiches of all time. And it was one of my staples when I was still a line cook. Right before work, grab a banh mi, pack it up, go to work, eat the banh mi in the middle of the service, be like, Got that. that's freaking good. It just energizes you. It's the perfect balance of salty, fatty, sweet, pickled, encapsulated in a sandwich. Before I'm on my soapbox for too long, let's make this, shall we? There are five elements that make the most incredible banh mi. Number one, the bread. You must have the most delectable of fresh baked grain based torpedoes that you can possibly find. Ideally made by yourself using my baguette recipe, which the link is in the description. Or you can go to your best local bakery if you have one. Number two, balanced pickles. Number three, ultra fresh ingredients. Obviously we've heard this a million times, so that should go without saying. And number four, a stupid dummy yummy sauce that makes you shout, mommy on the rooftops. And number five, a protein treated with love like this unbelievably crispy skinned pork belly. Now let's begin with our three pepper crispy pork belly. You'll start with a two to three pound pork belly with the skin on, obviously. Now before even cooking this, you need to place it on a wire rack, season it with salt on both sides, and let it sit uncovered in your fridge overnight to completely dry the skin if you want that crunchy yum yum. Now these bellies have already been portioned, cured, and dried by yours truly. So once it's been dried, season it with a mixture of salt to taste and a pepper powder of one tablespoon or nine grams of black peppercorns, one tablespoon or three grams of Sichuan peppercorns, and one tablespoon or nine grams of white peppercorns blended into, well, a powder. And be sure to hit it just on the meaty underside and not the skin. Now place that in some foil and wrap just the underside, leaving a nice border around the edges with the skin completely exposed. Rub a thin veneer of vegetable oil on the skin, give it a nice massage, and season the skin generously with kosher salt and ideally flaky salt. Now pop that bad boy in an oven set to 300 degrees Fahrenheit and roast for two and a half hours, checking halfway to make sure the foil is still snug and if your meat has had some shrinkage, hey, don't feel embarrassed, it happens to everyone. You can tighten the foil if necessary, but usually it's not a huge issue. Now once the it's done, take it out of the foil and pop it onto a wire rack set over a foil lined baking sheet. And I saw this sort of interesting method around the internet where people are putting balls of foil underneath parts of the pork that kind of sink down so that the skin is nice and level. I usually don't do this, so it's optional. And uh, I only saw a slight increase in consistency this way. Now crank the oven temperature to 500 degrees Fahrenheit or 475 if that's your oven's max for 25 to 30 minutes or until the skin starts to puff a little and is crispy and crunchy. Now, while that's finishing in the oven, let's get our accoutrement put together. First, the pickles. Real easy. Place three julienne carrots in a quart container and about half a small daikon julienne to roughly the same size. Place that in a pint container. Obviously, any heatproof container is going to work. Don't give me the whole, Josh, I don't have deli containers. Wah. Use a mason jar or a Pyrex. All is possible when you make Papa's pickles. Now, in your little sauce pot of secrets, add one cup or 240 milliliters of rice vinegar, one cup or 240 milliliters of water, two tablespoons or 28 grams of granulated sugar, one tablespoon or 10 grams of kosher salt, one tablespoon or five grams of coriander seeds, and two pieces of lime zest. Bring that up to a boil, then immediately remove from the heat and strain that hot liquid over your vegetables to submerge them. You could pickle these guys mixed together, but I prefer to keep them separate for more versatility in how they can be used. Now, just let those sit until they reach room temperature and you have pickles. Now, what is the sandwich without This is a kefir sweet chili sauce. It's f***ing good and very easy to make. In a sauce pot, add three quarters of a cup or 151 grams of granulated sugar, a quarter cup or 63 grams of sambal olek, one cup or 211 grams of rice vinegar, a quarter cup or 60 milliliters of water, two tablespoons or 20 grams of that good fish sauce. Then give that some whiskey. 
Turn the heat to medium high and bring that to a boil. Then just let that bad boy reduce for five minutes. Then in a small bowl, whisk together one tablespoon or eight grams of cornstarch with a splash of water to make a slurry. Pour that into your sweet chili sauce. Reduce the heat to low and let that simmer while stirring until thickened. Then cut the heat and add eight cloves of finely chopped garlic and two kefir lime leaves bruised. And let those flavors get to understand one another. Okay, back to the crunchy little men. Once the pork is done and is just absolutely stunning, pop it out and let it rest uncovered for five to ten minutes. Just let those juicy juices collect. And then all you gotta do is slice, which I recommend you get those slices generously thick, about half an inch, and please use a serrated knife to get through that skin more effectively. And just look at that juicy, crackly symphony that will make your eyes well up with tears of joy. Now we have mostly everything we need. We just need to cut our baguette into 12 inch segments. You'll need two baguettes for four people most likely. Wrap those brothers up in foil and pop into a warm oven for about five to 10 minutes. Slice up some fresh cucumber coins, thinly slice some fresh chilies of choice. I prefer red Fresno, but jalapeno would be just as delicious. And it's assembly time. Grab your hot bread, Cut it so one side is connected. Generously mayo the inside if you're a real one. Lay down as much of that beautiful pork belly inside as you desire. Shingle on your fresh sliced cucumber, followed by a lovely stack of your pickled vegetables, your sliced spicy peppers of choice, and finally, a little green garden of fresh cilantro. And that right there isn't just some sandwich. That is a full-on cultural eating experience. Now ready to put it in our mouth and see how we did. Wow, the unbelievable airy, puffy, undeniably crunchy, crispy. I'm not talk. That's a goddamn sandwich right there. Oh no, it happened again. Hello? It's so beautiful in here. It smells like fried pork skin. I love it. Oh, do you wanna transport to another land? You'll make this sandwich. This is. This is the perfect banh mi, in my opinion, honest to God. You got your pickled vegetables, the acidity, it cuts through the richness of the pork belly, but the pork belly is so juicy, so fatty, so salty, that, what is it, three, four pepper spice comes through? That's what you get. But it doesn't stop there, right? Maybe, maybe you want a little something extra, okay? Maybe you put a little bit of this on there. My life is complete, thank you. God bless. You wanna know what else has crisp golden skin and makes juicy, juicy yum yum? B-roll. All right, guys, and that is it. So we made our banh mi. Beautiful, luxurious, crispy skin pork, undeniably good. Now, it could have puffed a little more or I would have liked it to be more cloudy looking on the top, you know, like a bit of more of a chicharron, but it's all right, it's okay. Honestly, it actually worked out quite well. The inside was nice and airy, crunchy. I was a big fan of it. So if you're looking to make that crispy pork belly, now you have that recipe, and when you do make it, you know what to put it in, which is this banh mi. It's honestly not that complicated, and if you don't want to go super hard and make that pork, you can just do ground pork with similar spices and then put that in there. That's fine. Or steak, or chicken, or literally anything. Can you comprehend the greatness that this sandwich has to offer you? So with all that said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next.